antelope, cantaloupe, and cantaloupe once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to welcome you to Fruit of the Day, the one and only cantaloupe. So maybe you like them, maybe you hate them. Maybe you've never tasted one before. Well, whatever the case may be, please listen on. Why? Because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of the cantaloupe. All right. First up, a little bit of background information. The cantaloupe is a member of the gourd family, which includes winter squash, pumpkin, cucumber, and of course, gourds. <laughs> Also, cantaloupes are part of the melon family, which are related to the watermelon and honeydew melon. So there we have it, guys. We now know that the cantaloupe is actually a member of two different family of fruits. You can say that it's part of the gourd family or you can say that it's part of the melon family. Either way, you're absolutely correct. All right, now it's time to dive into a few fun facts. Did you know that there are two common varieties of cantaloupes? Hmm. First is the European cantaloupe, which derives its name from the Italian papal village of cantaloupe. And of course, we have the North American cantaloupe. Also, although it's cantaloupe throughout the U.S., many other nations refer to it as a musk melon. That's right. So take a look at our picture. We have... A melon on the right and then we have a second melon on the left <laughs> now the question is which one is a cantaloupe which one is the musk melon well to help you out just a little bit the image on the right is the actual cantaloupe and the image on the left is the musk melon now what are some of the differences it's easy just take a look at their appearance the cantaloupe is more of an oval shape also, look at its skin. It's a little darker, right? Now let's take a look at the musk melon. The musk melon is a little more spherical in shape, meaning it's more round, less oblong. And also take a look at its skin. It's a little lighter. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a few fun facts about the one and only cantaloupe. All right. Here are some not so fun facts about cantaloupes. You should not consume cantaloupe if you have a melon allergy. Hmm. Now, personally, I didn't quite know that there was a such thing as a melon allergy, but if you have one and maybe you've been diagnosed by some type of medical professional, then please keep your body temple healthy and stay away from melons. Or maybe you can do your own testing and see how much melon your body can take without eliciting any type of allergic symptoms. But to be safe rather than sorry, just <laughs> don't eat them at all. <laughs> also, it can be safer to purchase a whole melon and cut it up yourself rather than purchasing pre-cut melon. Pre-cut fruits and vegetables have been linked to an increased risk of salmonella poisoning. Oh no, so say it ain't so, Coach D. That's right, guys. So what does this tell us? That it's always a good idea to purchase your cantaloupes whole. And then once you get home, you can go ahead and cut it up yourself. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a few not so fun facts about cantaloupes. All right, it's time to dive into the 520 rule. Now, here's what we need to understand about the 520 rule is that it's all about food labels. Yes, food labels. Ultimately, the 520 rule is a guide. It's a guide that lets you know whether or not a food item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, when we talk about the 520 rule, really we're talking about percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now, let's take a look at our sample food label. 
Notice that some parts of the food label are highlighted in lavender or purple. As you can see, it says percent daily value. And then we have a whole bunch of percentages, right? Now, the next part that we need to pay attention to is what's highlighted in yellow. So these are certain nutrients such as total fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Now, the reason why these nutrients are highlighted in yellow is because, and it's quite unfortunate, these nutrients do a really good job at promoting disease within the body temple. So if anything, you want to make sure that these nutrients are on the lower end of the 520 rule. Next up, we have nutrients that are highlighted in light blue, such as dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron, which basically represent all vitamins and minerals. Now, these nutrients do just the opposite of the yellow nutrients, meaning when you put enough fiber, vitamins, and minerals in the body, they actually do something very, very good to the body. Specifically, they promote wellness and health, and they help to prevent disease. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, that is just a general uh, coverage of the 520 rule. Now, let's dive into the specifics, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, if a food item offers anywhere from 0% to 9% DV of any particular nutrient, then it is a good source of that nutrient. If the food item offers 10% to 19% DV, then it is considered to be a good source of that particular nutrient. Lastly, if the food item offers 20% DV or greater, then it is considered to be an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We now are fully aware of the 520 rule. Okay, now that we know about the 520 rule, Let's now dive into the nutrition facts. In other words, it's time to eat some cantaloupe. <laughs> All right, so for today's lecture, we're gonna simply say that a single serving of cantaloupe is equivalent to one cup of cantaloupe. So when we eat one cup, this is what we're putting into our bodies. 54.4 calories, very small, 14.1 grams of carbs, 1.3 grams of protein, 0.3 grams of fat, 1.4 grams of fiber. Now let's dive into the vitamins and minerals. Vitamin A comes in at a whopping 108% DV. Now, what does that mean? Well, 108% is greater than 20%. So that simply means that a single cup of cantaloupe is going to provide you with a super duper excellent source of vitamin A. As a matter of fact, because it's over 108, because it's over 100%, that simply means that that single cup of cantaloupe is going to provide your body with all the vitamin A you need in an entire day. That's right, just one cup. Now let's talk about vitamin C coming in at 98% DV. Well, based on the 520 rule, 98% is greater than 20%. So yes. Cantaloupe is an excellent source of vitamin C. Next up is potassium, coming in at 12% DV. Now, if we remember the 520 rule, 12% is between 10 and 19%. So that means that, yes, cantaloupe is a good source of potassium. Next up is folate, coming in at only 8%. Well, it's not greater than 9%. So that means that, unfortunately, cantaloupe is not a good source of folate. Next up is niacin, coming in at 6%, ah, not a good source. Next up is vitamin B6, coming in at 6%, not a good source. Then we have vitamin K and magnesium, both coming in at only 5% DV. So because they are at the lower end of the scale, Unfortunately, they are not, I'm sorry, cantaloupe is not a good source of vitamin K or magnesium. So there we have it, guys, a few nutrition facts about cantaloupe. Okay, now it's time to dive into the health benefits. But before we do, 
Coach D wants to drop a few wisdom dimes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this time to talk to you about the principle of cause and effect, which basically states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There is no such thing as chance and or luck. When we use those terms, it's simply talking about a principle that is not quite understood. So what does that all mean? It simply means that everything happens for a reason. So if we look at the nutrition facts versus the health benefits, well, here we go. The health benefits actually are the effects. The nutrition facts, or shall we say the nutrient content, are the causes. So what does all this mean? It simply means that if you want to be healthy, you got to put the good stuff in. If you want to be diseased, then put the bad stuff in. That's right. We are in control of our health based on what we eat, right? So here's what happens once we put the good stuff in from a good old cantaloupe. Number one, it's going to boost your immunity. Number two, it's going to help muscle recovery and stamina. It's going to protect your eye health. It's going to protect your skin health. It's good for digestion. It helps the body detox. It may even prevent heart disease. That's right. Also, cantaloupe is a great source of vitamin A and C. Now, here's the good thing about vitamins A and C is that they are both antioxidants. That's right. And what do we know about antioxidants? Well, they do the body good. How? Because they help to deactivate free radicals, which basically means they can help prevent heart disease, slow down the aging process, and help the body prevent the growth of tumors, i.e. cancer. Also, cantaloupe restores the body's pH level. It's low in calories, so it's going to help support any type of weight loss program that you may or may not be on. <laughs> also, they contain anti-inflammatory properties. Now, there are two phytochemicals that I definitely want to talk with you about very quickly. Say hello to curcubitacin B and cucurbitacin E. That's right. Those are two specific phytonutrients that basically help to prevent an, in, an inflammatory response within the body temple. And lastly, cantaloupe helps to fight cancer with powerful phytochemicals such as beta carotene, lutein, zeaxanthin, as well as cryptoxanthin. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, just a few health benefits about the one and only cantaloupe. All right, now it's time to dive into our website for everything vegan. Say hello to ForksOverKnives.com. By the way, there is a movie entitled Forks Over Knives, which I highly recommend. So as usual, I went to the website, did my research, and look at what I found two amazing cantaloupe vegan dishes that I would like to share with you right now. The first one is cantaloupe cucumber soup. Looks amazing. The second recipe is nice cream. That's right, guys. Nice cream. <laughs> now, if these two recipes have in any way, shape or form whet your appetite, guys, all you have to do is click on the description box. Why? Because I'm providing you with a link to each recipe. That's right. So do yourself a favor, click on the link and check out all the information. Now, once you get there, here's what you're going to find. ForksOverKnives.com is going to provide you with an ingredient list, instructions, and the cooking time. That's right. So if you're so inclined, make it taste it come back to the video and let coach d know right so there you have it guys not one but two amazing vegan cantaloupe recipes from forksoverknives.com all right 23 percent nation i hear you a lot of you say coach d 
I really like the fun facts. Coach D, I really appreciate the background information as well as the not so fun facts, right? But what I really want to know is when should I eat more cantaloupe? Well, guys, the answer is Nature Day. That's right, Nature Day. Now, perhaps you know nothing about Nature Day. That's okay, because I'm going to help clear things up. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, maybe you've been living under a rock and you know absolutely nothing about the 23% challenge. Well, in a nutshell, the challenge is a monthly seven day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships, and it also helps to save planet Earth. Now, here's the really cool part about the 23% challenge is that it's only seven days long. That's right. The first seven days of every single month, the first all the way through the seventh. Now, here's the good part. Because Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, that simply means that Nature Day is the first day of every single month. So if it's August 1st, September 1st, or December 1st, it's always Nature Day. Okay, so maybe now you're interested maybe now you're intrigued or maybe now you're excited about nature day and you want to learn a little more about it well here we go guys nature day is all about getting closer to nature now yes there are lots of different things that you can do to get closer to nature you can go swim in a lake you can go take a dip in the ocean why not skinny dip <laughs> you can also go pet a pet you can go to a zoo. Why not? Right. But when it comes to the 23% challenge, Coach D wants us to get closer to nature by simply eating it. That's right, guys. It's time to eat more plants. Now, perhaps you're the type of person who is looking to lose a little bit of weight. Maybe you're the type of person who just simply wants to eat more plants. Maybe you're the type of person who is considering transitioning to a more whole food plant-based diet right well if that's you i want to offer you three avenues that i believe can help make that transition easier so path number one is to try to become a three percent vegan now what does that mean it simply means that you choose to eat only plant foods and drink only water only one day out of an entire month. Next up is a 13% vegan, which is anyone, man, woman, or child, who chooses to only eat plant foods and drink only water only four days out of an entire month. Now, there are two ways in which you can go about becoming a 13% vegan. You can choose to do the first four days of the month, which I recommend, or providing the month has four weeks in it, you could do one day per week, right? Now, the third avenue is to become a 23% vegan, which technically is what Coach D is. So what does that mean? It simply means that for the first seven days of every single month, I only eat plant foods and drink only water. So now the question is, which plant foods do you eat, Coach D? Well, here we go. I eat all fruits, all vegetables and herbs, all nuts and seeds, all legumes, meaning beans and peas, and then we cannot forget about whole grains. So basically, I eat only from the five food groups of plant foods, meaning fruits, vegetables and herbs, nuts and seeds, legumes, meaning beans and peas, and of course, whole grains. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, a great explanation of what Nature Day is all about. All right. So maybe now you're ready. Maybe now you're motivated and I've inspired you to try to become a 3%, 13% or maybe a 23% vegan. And maybe now you need some advice. Maybe now you're looking for a few tips. Well, if you need advice, if you need tips, you're definitely in the right spot. So 
Here are Coach D's tips to help, to help make your nature day successful. Tip number one, visit your local grocery store. Why are you going to do that? Well, because grocery stores are a great place to purchase your plant foods from. Now, when you get there, you're only going to go in two places. Number one is the produce section. Why? Because that's where all of the fresh plant foods are located. And number two, you can go ahead and walk on over to the freezer aisle. Why? Because that's where your frozen plant foods are located. Now, some of us may be a little concerned, right, about which is better, fresh versus frozen. Well, they each have their advantages and disadvantages, but ultimately they are very, very comparable to one another. So <clears throat> go ahead and make either one of your choice. Regardless, you're still doing the body good. Tip number two is to go visit a local farmer's market. Now, yes, there are some advantages to shopping at a farmer's market versus a grocery store. For instance, if you're looking for organic plant foods, then farmer's markets are definitely the way to go. Why? Because the average farmer's market will only accept organic produce from local farmers. Another advantage, local farmers, <clears throat> not only are they amazing, but they grow organic food, which is then sold through the markets. Now, because the food is grown locally, that means, number one, less pesticides and fewer herbicides. And it also means less transportation time, right? And so that savings is then passed on to you, meaning the end consumer. My third tip is to go back to the grocery store. But this time, let's go to the prepared dishes section. Now, for those of us who don't know how to cook plant foods, for those of us who don't have time to cook plant foods, <laughs> right, then the prepared dishes section is going to be ideal for you. Some grocery stores may term it the kitchen. Whatever the title is, prepared dishes section or the kitchen, please walk on over there, talk to the person behind the counter and let them know that you're looking for vegan options. Now, there may be a possibility that you know what none of those dishes are. Just simply talk to the person, ask them for a sample. They'll give it to you, right? And hopefully you like it. And if you do, buy it by the pound or maybe even two pounds. Why not? And my fourth tip to help make your nature day successful is to visit a vegan restaurant. That's right, guys. It's time to support the vegan community. So why not eat at a restaurant, right? Now, eating at a vegan restaurant can be a great experience in and of itself. Now, there are some advantages. Number one, vegan restaurants hire vegan chefs who not only know how to correctly prepare plant foods, but they also know which plant foods to combine to, to give you a nutritious, delicious dish. Now, here's the thing. You may not know where a vegan restaurant is located. If that's the case, all you have to do is go to Google. Type in vegan restaurants near me, and within less than half of a second, Google will give you your desired results. Now, if you decide to go, please do two things. Number one, let them know that Coach D sent you. And number two, be sure to order something with cantaloupe in it. So there we have it, guys. Not one, not two, not three, but four amazing tips to help make your nature day successful. All right, it's time for our question of the day, which comes from yours truly and the rest of the 23% nation. We have inquiring minds, so we want to know, the cantaloupe derived its name from which European country? Now, hopefully you were listening. Why? Because I stated it within the video. So if you really want to know the answer, just go back a few minutes. That's all you got to do. And be sure to write your answer in the comment box below. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I also want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. 
This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign off, I got to ask you to please subscribe, like, and share the video, especially if you love cantaloupes. And don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out. God bless. Take care. And never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.